the vaccine is more dangerous than the virus itself because the vaccine still has all those pro-clotting abilities, has all those inflammatory abilities, whereas the spike from Omicron does not. So the fact that the Wuhan spike is still present in any of these vaccines, when in circulation it went extinct more than a year and a half ago now, is really perplexing. It's an extinct virus. So we're vaccinating against something that doesn't exist anymore technically and has all risk with zero benefit. It can cause the clotting still. It can trigger those inflammatory pathways. It can get into the nucleus of our T cells we were talking about. It can get into our mitochondria and destroy our mitochondrial function. That's the respiration of every cell in our body. Um, it can bind to the abundant ACE2 receptors on ovarian cells. It can destroy um, metabolic pathways to where your liver becomes fatty. It can destroy kidney capacity. It causes brain fog because it can cross the blood-brain barrier. Omicron doesn't do that. It may to a tiny degree, so don't quote me as saying never, never say never. Omicron is mutating and I have reports out of colleagues in the upper Midwest saying they're seeing more pulmonary COVID again but I don't know if that's in the vaccinated individuals and not the unvaccinated. I'm, the probability is the vaccinated based on data coming out of other countries. This is kind of a major question for me, like where are the spike harms manifested? Okay, so the, the first one is what you kind of brought up um, early and that's reactivated viruses. Um, again, personal confession, Epstein-Barr. It is no fun to have chronic fatigue syndrome. People see me and they're like, oh, he's the Energizer Bunny. I'm like, yeah, for three or four hours a day. And then you don't see how much I have to go try to recover and crash. So I understand you know, that vaccine injury feeling of this chronic fatigue feeling. So number one, reactivated Epstein-Barr, um, you know, my colleague, Dr. Urso, in about half of his fatigued patients, it's reactivated viruses that he's seeing. So I don't judge people. If you got a shot, didn't get a shot, people were doing what they thought was best at the time. What I say now is if you got one, don't get two. If you got two, definitely don't get three. If you got three, please don't get four. Because not only is that Wuhan gone, but the uh, Moderna only covers BA1 and Wuhan, both extinct. Pfizer covers Wuhan plus a fragment of BA4 and BA5, which are on the wane because now we're seeing the new variants come up. Now we have two expired products for to extinct viruses. But that spike causes reactivation of viruses. Epstein-Barr virus is the one that causes a lot of fatigue in patients. Other herpes family viruses, cytomegalovirus, CMV. Um, we're seeing an uptick in Lyme disease. Um, we are seeing an uptick in unusual viruses, um, para-echoviruses in children. Uh, para-influenza viruses normally don't hospitalize adults. Now we're seeing adults hospitalized with those. It's the immune system's inability, so that's one. Reactivation of other diseases because of immune suppression. Number two, mitochondrial harm. So I mentioned mitochondria. Mitochondria, every cell in your body has mitochondria. And they're the powerhouse of your cell. And they're responsible for making ATP as their end product. And why does a hummingbird's wings fly so fast? Because they're making countless copies of ATP so quickly. Very, very energetic cells. The spike protein will disrupt um, metabolism and disrupt those pathways in the mitochondria. So Dr. Clough out of Poland, Dr. Abramovich, they looked at this and they were able to show, look in especially neural tissue. So talking about brain fog, you know, the individuals you hear say that so much, it's because the mitochondria are being harmed. That spike is getting in there. And I'll give you a picture to show in this presentation of that spike in the brain tissue. That mitochondria, now it's damaged, it can't produce as much ATP. And now these neural cells are about the equivalent of the cells in a brain tumor. They're slow, they're mushy, they're not quick to react. That can happen in cardiac tissue. Another paper that I'll present tomorrow has that um, clearly presented. That can happen in ovarian tissue. That can happen in muscle tissue. So one virus is two, mitochondria. Three, cardiac damage. We know that the spike protein gets into the heart tissues. That spike protein will induce all those other inflammatory cells to come in and now swell the heart 
Um, there was a really interesting study on cardiomyopathy, that swelling, ballooning of the heart in a mouse model, and it swelled the heart by like 30%. Now, I have the tissues of triathletes that died on their swim, and these are peak of performance, a week or two after their second shot. Autopsy from the medical examiner's office, cardiomegaly, oh well but they didn't look for spike protein. And that's, again, I'm encouraging all my colleagues, look, you have the ability to do this, do this now. Every coroner, every medical examiner, they have the ability to do this. So these sudden adult deaths that we're hearing about that are unusual weren't happening in 2020 during the COVID outbreak. Weren't happening in early 2021 before the younger cohort were mandated to start getting the shots. They started happening in late 21 and have continued as people start getting this third and fourth shot. There's the ability for any and every pathologist in the world, not me, not me, just not just me, any and all of them can look for this. So they can find that spike protein in those cardiac tissues. Um, it can destroy any tissue in the body in terms of, it, the spike itself doesn't destroy the tissue. The spike lands and then it triggers an inflammatory reaction. The body wants to react to it. So then all those inflammatory cells release cytokines and chemicals that will end up munching away those tissues. Uh, there's the fertility question, and I will get criticized for this. Uh, we know that the lipid nanoparticle goes to the ovaries. We know how much the eggs in the ovaries express ACE2 during their developmental cycles. The spike protein binds there. What does the inflammatory system do? Same thing it's doing to those other organs. So in Germany, 20% decrease in 2022 first quarter of fertility rates. Same thing in Sweden, same thing in Taiwan, same thing in other Scandinavian countries. Correlation doesn't equal causation. But as a pathologist, that's a concerning area I've seen as well in terms of um, the spike protein affecting um, hormonal cycles. So even if the woman isn't trying to get pregnant, that spike protein can go to the brain, can go to our feedback loops of our endocrine system in the brain and, uh, and our endocrine organs and feed back and mess up our hormone cycles. So we've seen a lot of that in the laboratory. The spike protein can go to the adrenal glands, our autonomic uh, nervous system, our sympathetic parasympathetic ner nervous system, your blood pressure, um, your ability to you know, rev up or relax, fight or flight, that gets messed up. Um, the spike will go to the chromaffin cells of the adrenal gland, all sorts of things. Um, in addition to that, that spike protein will um, inflame the blood vessels, you know, the endothelial lining, and this gets into the clotting cascades, and this is highly, high, highly concerning. And again, that Wuhan spike that's on these shots isn't on Omicron. Omicron is a new variant. That shot has that very thrombogenic clot-inducing spike protein. And there are receptors all throughout our body, on our platelets, on those endothelial, those blood cell linings, on our red blood cells, that once that spike binds, it just starts this whole little cascade, this little waterfall of this chemical binds this, 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 and what you end up with is microclots and macroclots.